hi cake friend and welcome to the home bakers hive youtube channel a place where bakers get together to learn how to run a profitable baking business like comment and subscribe and let's grow together so today we are talking about four reasons why you should not consider other bakers prices when setting your own now, like me, you might have seen other bakers go on Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, asking other bakers what they should be charging for their cakes. And I mean, there's like no information given most of the time. Like a baker would just post a picture of a certain cake and say, hey, a client sent me this cake. How much do you think I should charge for it? I mean, like, really? Really? First of all, we need to know what type of flavor is that cake? You know, how many people are going to be served? You know, how many servings are you looking for? Um, what type of event is it going to be? Depending on whether it's an indoor or outdoor event, you would need to decide whether you're going to use a certain type of technique or not. So it's really important that you understand and know what you are doing. And I don't know if these are amateur bakers and I'm not bashing anyone. I'm really just trying to bring out information here, letting us all know that we don't need to consider other people's prices when setting our own. Now, the most important thing to understand as a baker is what you are doing. If you don't know what you are doing, then it's going to be so difficult to, first of all, even set the price or even to understand the technique or whatever is going to go on from start to finish of that cake getting it out to the client. What exactly do you go through? What type of processes are you going to go through? Do you understand the techniques that you'll be using? That is super, super important to understand before you even set the price. Now, it's not enough to do something that you've not done before. Say, for example, when I was starting out, I know I was guilty of this. I would want to do a certain type of cake and I would be using that technique for this first time. And this would be a client's cake. And that is simply not a smart way of doing things. I have not really personally run into disappointing a client because of doing a technique that I've not done before. But at the stage that I'm at, I would not recommend anyone to, you know, do a technique or try out a new technique on a cake for the first time when, the, when, when a client has ordered that cake. For example, if you've not done a certain rose or a certain type of flower before and you've got an order for that type of flower, say, for example, it's a peony flower and you've not done it before, but you've done other types of fondant roses, then it's better you, you know, try to do that or practice it in advance and try to do that before the order, or you order that puny flower from another baker. But it's really not wise to, you know, experiment on a client's cake. More so, it's very, very, very important to understand what goes in the production process from start to finish so that you know what you're setting yourself up for. You need to know the type of products that you're going to buy, you need to know the type of ingredients that you're going to be using so that you understand the type of prices that you could possibly charge. That'll tell you how many labor hours you can expect to put in this particular order. So here are four reasons why you should not be asking other bakers why you should be charging for your cakes. Reason number one, you have your own story, you have your own kitchen, your own equipment, you have your own costs, and you've got your own lifestyle. With that being said, what do I mean? You have your own kitchen, your own story, your own life, your own everything, right? What I have in my kitchen is not the same as what the next baker has. Some bakers like to DIY instead of buying all the fancy tools and equipment and they still end up with the best quality that they could possibly, possibly bring out. Other bakers want to buy every piece of tool and equipment so that they can achieve a certain technique. And based on the information that other bakers are giving you, you cannot set your prices because maybe you would need to buy that specific tool so that you can complete that order. While that baker doesn't have to buy that tool because they probably have it in their shelf or in their cabinet, or they're using a DIY technique so they can complete that order. So it's very, prices are very specific to your circumstances. It's very specific to your lifestyle. It's very specific to your kitchen. For example, I have children, I have babies, like I have a two-year-old boy, I've got a five-year-old boy, and I've got a seven-year-old boy. So they need my attention. They need my attention while I'm completing an order. So because of that, 
I would charge a certain type of price because my time that I spend is valuable. And based on that, I charge my clients a certain type of price. I mean, you might dispute that and say, why do you want to charge your clients for your time like that? While, you know, that is not accounting them. I mean, it's all my stress and it's all my worries and it's adding to my load. So I feel like if I'm going to put my skill and effort in that cake, then I need to charge for the price, I mean, or for the time that I'm spending away from my family. And so I have my own um, hourly rate, right, that I charge for my my kids based on my unique skill sets, based on my lifestyle, based on my equipment, based on what I have or what's going on in my environment. So that is the number one reason why you should not be asking other bakers what you should be charging for your kids. The second reason why you should not be asking other bakers what you should be charging for your own cakes is it's your business and it's your rules, right? Okay, so for me, you would say that that is less, but for me, I would like to take two orders per month and that is really good. Based on the prices that I have, I'm super happy with two orders per month. Okay, but another baker can take on 10 orders per month. Another one can take on four orders per month. Another one can take on 20 orders per month. It's really your life. It's your circumstances. It's your kitchen. It's your business. Right. So based on that, you should not be asking other people what you should be charging because who knows your carrying capacity. So at the end of the day, it's your business and it's your rules. You set the rules. Say, for example, my lead time for ordering is seven days. So if you don't order with me seven days ahead of time, then I mean, I will not be taking your order. But if you can really order with me Less than that, you know, I mean, if you can order seven days ahead of time, I'll take your order. But if you order less than seven days, then I will charge you a late fee, right? Because I'll be rushing through that order. I would need to, you know, um, you know, push some of my items off from my agenda so that I can accommodate your order. And so I'll need to charge you a late fee. So it's your business and it's your rules. So that is the second reason why you should not be asking other bakers in Facebook groups and WhatsApp groups what you should be charging for your cakes. And just as a side note, because you're listening to this YouTube video, I want to give you my free cake pricing guide. Just in case you are still struggling in this area and you honestly don't know what to consider when charging for your cakes, I have a free cake pricing guide that you can download. And if you're struggling with cake pricing, I have an extension on that free cake pricing guide. It's a paid version. I have a cake pricing calculator that automatically, you know, just gets you to your cake price if you just give it some values like the ingredients or um, the prices for your ingredients and a couple of other you know important prices then it will automatically populate your price for you it considers your profit margin and it also considers your labor cost if you're interested link is in the description below reason number three why you should not be asking other bakers what you should be charging for your cakes is it's your ideal client not theirs now The next baker might have a ideal client that they're trying to target. And you, on the other hand, have a certain type of client that you want to target. So it's their ideal client against your ideal client. And they will give you advice based on their ideal client. For example, if you're a baker that's focusing on vegan bakes, for example, you are targeting people that are health conscious, right? While if you're just an ordinary baker, not that ordinary bakers are not targeting health clients, but if you are not a vegan baker, then I mean, your cakes are for everyone, right? So you don't have to consider certain type of ingredients. You don't have to consider certain type of hygiene techniques that a vegan baker would consider or a gluten-free bakery would consider. So, I mean, it's their ideal client against your ideal client. Another person might just want to exclusively target high-end clients. For example, they might target corporates and wedding clients. While you are probably targeting celebration clients, like you want to do birthday cakes and celebration cakes. So it's their ideal client versus your ideal client. So you need to, um, you know, you need to streamline your business based on your ideal client. You need to change your messaging based on your ideal client. And I mean, I talk extensively about this in my ideal client training course or in my ideal client course where I teach you exactly how to find your ideal client, how to message or how to craft your marketing copy for your ideal client and so forth. So consider your ideal client when charging for your cakes or your baked goods. And that is another reason why you should not be asking other bakers what you should be charging for your cakes.
Reason number four why you should not be asking other bakers what you should be charging for your cakes is different areas, different costs. Now, this might be a little bit of a debate, but I'm just going to throw it out there. I mean... Different areas have different costs, like, um, like say, for example, when I started out my baking journey, I was in a small town, and then I moved to a big town. And in a, in a city, I have to, like, drive all over town to go from this place to the other. The commute is quite long. There's more hours that I spend in traffic and so forth. But in a small town, like, although I don't have to spend a lot of time in traffic, I don't get all the supplies that I want for my baked goods. And so different areas might have different costs. And these costs might, um, you know, include things like transport. It might include things like supply costs. Um, you know, if you are in a different area, like in a smaller town, like I was when I started out, you might even get your baking supplies from another town and then you might need to pay for postage fees, right? So these are all costs that you need to consider. And this is why you should not be asking other bakers what you should be charging for your cakes. It's really important to understand what type of business you are doing. It's really important to understand the dynamics that are happening around you as far as your baking business and your baking career is concerned. Once you understand that, you need to incorporate these as costs. Don't ignore anything. If you um, book in a cake order and then you start complaining about things like, oh, this ingredient is expensive, oh, I spent so much time doing this and it's not worth it, then it, that is just an indication that you need to consider that as a cost and include it in your pricing. Again, I'll mention it. I have a free cake pricing guide. If you'd love to download it, the link is down in the description below also. As an extension to the cake pricing guide, I do have a cake costing and cake pricing training. It comes as a bundle pack and it includes a cake pricing calculator. Feel free to visit those links and see what you can get from that. Other than that, these are the four reasons, again, why you should not be asking other bakers what you should be charging for your cakes. Your own story, your own kitchen, your own business. So that is your number one. Reason number two is your business, your rules. And then reason number three is your ideal client versus their ideal client. And finally, reason number four is different areas have different costs. So those are the four reasons why you should not be asking other business that you should be talking. I'll see you in the next.